an individual, entity, or group has the potential to be adversely or wrongly affected by freezing measures. This might occur in any of the following circumstances. By having an identical or similar name to a designated individual, entity, or group. By remaining affected by the freezing measures, despite being removed from the sanctions list, or as a third party, acting in good faith that has been affected by a freezing measure. If any of these scenarios are applicable, then the affected party is eligible to apply for the freezing measures to be lifted by submitting a written application using the forms provided on the Executive Office's website, accompanied with all supporting documents being sent to tfs at eocn.gov.ae. The Executive Office for Control and Nonproliferation will notify the applicant and any relevant parties once the request has been granted. Any designated individual, entity, or group may request access to all or part of the frozen funds or other assets under the local terrorist list or UN consolidated list for any of the following purposes. To cover necessary or basic expenses, including humanitarian needs such as foodstuffs, rent, mortgages, medicine, medical treatment, insurance premiums, educational and judicial fees, and public utility fees, or to pay professional fees and costs relating to rendered legal services and other exceptional or extraordinary expenses within reasonable limits, or services relating to safekeeping or management of frozen funds. To process the application, the correct forms must be submitted stating the purpose while providing all necessary supporting documents to the Executive Office for Control and Nonproliferation to tfs at eocn .gov.ae. The Executive Office for Control and Nonproliferation will deal with the request appropriately and will notify the applicant and the relevant parties once the request has been processed. If a designated individual, entity, or group can demonstrate that they do not or no longer meet the criteria for the designation, or if the applicant is seeking the removal of a deceased person or entity that no longer exists, then the following process must be followed. Firstly, identify whether the designation is relevant to the local terrorist list or the United Nations consolidated lists. If the designation is relevant to the UN Security Council's ISIL and Al-Qaeda sanctions list, then you must submit a delisting request directly to the United Nations Office of the Ombudsperson. If the designation is related to any UN Security Council sanction list other than ISIL and Al-Qaeda, then you must submit the delisting request directly through the United Nations Focal Point for delisting. Please visit the United Nations website for more details on delisting procedures from UN sanctions lists. If the designation is relevant to the local terrorist list, the form available online to delist must be submitted while providing all necessary supporting documents to the Executive Office for Control and Nonproliferation by email to tfs at eocn.gov.ae. Once the request has been received, the Executive Office for Control and Nonproliferation will refer the request to the relevant authorities. If the request has been granted, then the individual, entity, or group will be removed from the list and all relevant parties will be notified. For more information on any of the procedures listed above, please log on to the Executive Office's website, www.eocn.gov.ae, where you will also find guidance documents to implement these measures.